Swiss luxury group Richemont owns several of the world's leading jewelry watches and writing instrument brands, including Cartier, Von Cleef and Arpels, IWC Panerai and Mont Blanc. It is controlled by the Rupert family and has made great progress in sales in China. It has a market cap of 267 billion rand and a price to earnings ratio of 18 and a dividend yield of 0.6 and it's Van Cleef and Arpels. Is that correct? I don't Van, know. I've never even bought or even <laughs> seen. I've seen the stores but I never knew how to pronounce them. <laughs> Look, it really well, has Well, at least we're all in the same boat. I'm <laughs> glad you as in the dark as I am. I've never owned one. It's a great success story because obviously Anton Rupert used the cigarette revenues in South Africa to initially start making some tentative small purchases of stakes in family-owned companies typically and Cartier is the strongest of them all we all know about the Cartier watches the tank and all the other models that everybody drools about everybody wants to go in and look at those the entry-level models are like you know 20,000 Rand the top end of the range you know price on application manufactured in Switzerland and that's part of the cachet so fantastic margins but as we've been alluding to the main drivers of sales in recent years have been people from countries like China not only when they're at home but also when they travel because mm. remember lots of countries have these duties and rules about what can be imported and so on so people love when they're traveling you know when they've lost their marbles UK sales they're not case feeling in point. like there's a budget and then they can go wild in duty free or when they're visiting uh, the salons case in point mm -hmm. the UK results from Richemont boosted by Chinese tourists mm -hmm. UK mm -hmm. and Europe is this one that you should acquire at current levels and hold for the long term it's the true blue chip mm. among all stocks well, I mean, the, uh, the interesting thing, as we've alluded to, is it's, it's definitely a, a play on Chinese and, and Asian consumers and the wealth effect of them getting richer. So, I mean, 45% of sales are in, is in the Asia-Pacific area directly. And then, of course, who knows, probably there's another 15, 20% of sales which happen in Europe, which are actually to Asian nationals when they're traveling because of the, the lower taxes that you have in, in Europe. So definitely a long-term play I mean you know if you had to fast forward 10 years time do we think Asia Asian nationals are going to be richer or poorer than where they are now you look at GDP growth I know GDP growth is slowing in China but it's it certainly 10 years time they're going to have more money and they're going to want to spend more money okay then you you saying buy this one for the long term well if I read through all of yeah those. yeah, yeah. So, so certainly this one I think and, and the nice thing is with this whole sector is it's the supply demand dynamics are slightly different you know if you take a commodity you want to pay, pay the least amount for the same commodity where this one you know if they drop the price of a car to your watch you know, it doesn't make you want to go out and buy it more in fact it's probably the opposite if they raise the price you'll buy it more so definitely it's I think it's, a, it's of, the exclusivity of the product mm. Paul uh, around current levels here we saw a little drop off at that uh, just above the yeah. 41 50 level I think that was when there was, you know, globally the economy was quite weak, but then they came through with a positive sales update. And, and then it became apparent that while a lot of people are concerned about China slowing down, the Chinese authorities seem to want to encourage consumption spending and they want to de-emphasize infrastructure spending. So a lot of the investment uh, world has been shifting out of the BHP bulletins into the likes of LVMH and Richmond and so on to try and play that side of the story. The other thing about them that I like is that they are constantly acquiring new brands, you know, either watches. You've seen they've made a, quite a significant entry into luxury clothing with that online site Net Apporter. And then last week they bought a golf equipment, sports equipment, men's... True diversification equipment. happening well, within Well, you the know fort. how it works with Johan Rupert, the CEO. He was probably wearing the shirts from Peter Miller, and then he said, I liked it so much, so yeah, I bought, bought the, company. the company. So, I mean, here we go, but it's going to be merged with their other sort of brands that they're active in, in golf and shooting and that kind of thing. Hot or not on Richemont, Jonathan? Well, I mean, so it's at an 18 PE, but I mean, historically, the stock has always traded at a 17, 18, and we can see quite a lot of earnings growth. It's certainly, it's, it's slowing. We know it's slowing, but uh, we certainly see earnings growth in the long term, and it's hot for me. Paul, hot or not on Richemont? Yeah, I like it as well. Hot, happy.